it is part three of section 1.1 becoming a good programmer the key to becoming a good programmer is your passion nothing is better than passion if you are passionate on programming then you will become a good programmer in a very short time to help you become a good programmer we'll consider some aspects of programming and also I'll try to give you some tips on programming as aforementioned computer programming or simply programming is the process of building an executable computer program for solving a computational task. A task may consist of many subtasks, each of which can be implemented as a function. Some functions may be used more than once or repeatedly in a program. Here, uh, you should consider the following aspects of programming before coding. And task modularization uh, is about partitioning of the given task. The given and computational task can be partitioned into small, uh, several subtasks. Each one is called a module, and each of which is manageable, convenient, and uh, effectively in both mathem mathematical analysis and computer implementation. That means that each one is easy to handle and easy to uh, implement. The major goal of task modularization is to build a backbone of programming. Task modularization is quite important. You have to separate out uh, the given task into small subtasks. Now you have to consider um, now uh, development of algorithm. For each module, uh, you have to develop a computational algorithm and uh, save uh, the algorithm into a function. And here, and practically now, in order to implement a a program you have to choose a computer language you can choose one of the computer languages so that uh, you can implement quite effectively and conveniently here um, occasionally you may uh, implement the subtasks uh, using more than one computer languages and uh, by doing that, you can maximize the performance of uh, the resulting program. And also, you may minimize uh, your human efforts. If you uh, separate a given task into um, several uh, uh, subtasks, then for some subtasks, some program is available. So functions are available, then you can use them. But uh, the program is written in uh, some, maybe some other languages. Uh, for example, you want, you want to use um, um, C, but uh, for some tasks it's written in Fortran, then rather than uh, writing uh, C code, you may um, and download the uh, Fortran code and you can uh, use it so that uh, to minimize human effort and to maximize uh, the performance you may use um, uh, some uh, more than one language here uh, by the way um, Fortran is the fastest language in scientific computing Fortran is about uh, 20 percent faster than C 
And here uh, you'll use a math flare, but a math flare is about twice you, uh, slower than C in many cases. In, even in scripture language, uh, the math lab is so fast nowadays. And without compiling, we are using uh, math lab script. And now it's about uh, twice slower than C. And that is really uh, amazing. The speed of math lab is so good. Uh, if we are using, uh, for instance, Python, then uh, it'll be about uh, 50 or uh, sometimes 100 times slower than C. So that uh, inside, uh, behind the, of the, um, the Python, and the core portion are implemented in C or Fortran so that uh, we can uh, here accelerate the, the performance and so that in many uh, packages and here the core portion is usually implemented by using very effective languages. Okay, so uh, eventually, even though you are using uh, Python later on, you are using uh, not only Python, but also you are using some uh, very effective languages. Okay, once you implement a program, the code, then now you have to verify for correctness and effectiveness. And such a process of finding and resolving defects or issues within a computer program is called debugging. And it's occasionally the case that uh, verification and debugging takes a much longer time than implementation itself. For a small program, you can finish implementation in a day but sometimes debugging, debugging uh, takes more than a week and sometimes more than a month. So you have to uh, start with a very clear mathematical logic. Your thinking is not logical, then easily you can add some uh, mistakes. And uh, because your logic is not mm, clear, uh, it's not easy to find the place where um, the mistake is involved in, so that you have to think uh, very logically. And with a clear logic, you can write a program much more effectively. Okay. Now, here we have tips for programming. Uh, it's quite simple. If you uh, want to add functions, then try to add functions one by one. Uh, building a program is not a simple problem, but a difficult project, uh, in particular when the program should be constructed from scratch. And once you start from scratch, uh, a good strategy for an effective programming is add functions one by one. After modularization, each module can be implemented uh, as a function. So add a function and step by step and check if the program is correct uh, each time adding a function. Uh, so after adding a function, check if it is correct. Uh, in this case, you will focus on the last function you added, just added, so that uh, check if uh, uh, the function is correct, then move to the next function. So uh, in this way, the programmer should keep the program in a working condition for the whole period of time and implementation. In this way, you can minimize burgers so that you can minimize the debugging time. And here, use 
uh, or modification of functions, sometimes uh, you have to modify and use old functions used for uh, similar projects. So when uh, uh, it is the case, you may have to start the work by copying all the functions to newly named functions to modify rather than adding replacing lines of the original functions. Uh, if you uh, try to keep the original functions, uh, then it's quite uh, easy to debug. And here, uh, you keep the program in working condition all the time uh, more easily. Uh, the reason is that because you have here the background and then uh, now along using that one and once it is not working or producing some unexpected results then you can uh, check uh, your logic and programming so that you can uh, make it correct quite easily by using the old one so don't try to replace uh, or add some lines to the original functions and just copy it to a duly named function. For example, if you uh, try to copy or just, uh, for example, square sum earlier we considered, then uh, copy it to square sum 2 and try to adjust uh, square sum 2 and refer the square sum, the original function and if you need, okay? Okay, that's the tips. For successful programming, the programmer may consider the following before uh, beginning implementation. First of all, you have to understand the problem. And then uh, you have to uh, consider uh, what uh, inputs could be and what uh, operations um, uh, could be involved and what uh, outputs could be. And also, uh, you have to organize the required uh, algorithms uh, for each module. And sometimes uh, for some module, you can use old functions, but sometimes you have to implement newly. And uh, now uh, to um, uh, make the program, resulting program, uh, working uh, effectively and correctly, you have to uh, do uh, require the mathematical method and mathematical derivation so that you can design the algorithm much more effectively. And also, uh, you have to uh, uh, consider program structure and practically you have to place the operations and functions in a right position in the right order. So you have to consider uh, program structure. After finishing implementation, you have to verify your program so that you have to uh, consider how to verify the code to make sure correctness. In the beginning, uh, at least uh, the code must be correct. And then later on, and when you are dealing with real data or huge data, if it is not uh, efficient, then you may modify your program to get uh, better uh, um, the efficiency. But in the beginning, your code must be correct. Uh, let's consider this example. Let us write a program for sorting an array of numbers from smallest to largest. This is now a computational task. Here, um, so that before coding, you have to consider the following. What is the goal? The goal is uh, to get a sorting algorithm. And sorting method is now comparison of uh, 
the component pairs for the smaller to move up. And that is because we are sorting from smallest to largest one, so that the method must be uh, uh, the chosen in this way for each two number pairs, and we compare them, and then uh, the small one will go the front. Okay. Now, uh, if you write down a code, then uh, how can I, you have to ask yourself, how can I verify the program work correctly? And here, you may uh, use a randomly generated array of numbers and uh, test here. Now, when we are implementing a code, then, and you have to consider also parameters, what could be input and output parameters? And for input, here uh, it's an um, array of numbers, and output must be the sorted array. Okay, here um, we can implement a code in this way. There is a mysort.m. Now, uh, there is a function name in the uh, uh, on the first line, you have to specify uh, the clear function. That is function name, that is input, then s is output. So now uh, we have this dot portion, and, and that is when you are using help command, then you will see uh, this portion. Now, once input r on array is given, then we copy it to s. And now we check the length, and from the last one, yeah. Now, okay, that is the last one, and from beginning to uh, uh, the one last one, and we compare uh, two values, consecutive values, so that now that is large, larger than. The next one, early one is larger than next one. Then we uh, change the position, the swap, and in MATLAB, you have to do in this way. You can save one value into temporary variable, and then now uh, the behind one is saved into earlier one, and now behind one is now getting the value in a temporary uh, 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 value variable. So in this way, we can swap. And so that after passing this line, now that will become larger. The next one will become larger. So through this one, now for each j and earlier uh, portion of the array, it's trying to get the largest one so that the largest one will be saved into j. So we repeat uh, j from now n to uh, go down to 2, so that eventually the largest largest one will be uh, the rightmost one in end one, and smallest one will be the beginning uh, value. Now that's the uh, implementation. And here, now um, uh, we'll try to verify uh, the function we uh, implemented. Now here we uh, choose 10. So now uh, we try to make a, a random array of 10 uh, uh, the values, but each one it will be chosen from 1 to 100. So that each one, and now 1 by 10, 1 by n, so that is row vector of 10 entries n is 10, and then here the each value is between 1 and 100. So r is made in this way, and then here by passing my sort, and now that is output of uh, the, the sorting algorithm. Here, the, here we have output, r is randomly generated in this way, and then here, after passing, after calling my sort, 
it is sorted from smallest one to the largest one. It's working nicely for uh, this array, but uh, you may have to run uh, this uh, MySort uh, uh, algorithm and by using sort to array dot m you have you may have to call this uh, sort to array dot m uh, a few times to make sure that uh, my sort works correctly so once it is happening correctly but for some other cases it may not so that you have to run sometimes several times to make sure that your code works correctly okay here we have a summary. Programming versus coding. Programming consists of analysis, design, coding, and uh, verification. It requires uh, creative thinking and reasoning on top of coding. So coding is simply building um, a code. Now programming is here uh, requires more than um, coding. Practically, you have to think very uh, creatively and also requires uh, some um, clear reasoning. So mathematical logic is the major thing. It would better begin with a simple computer language to focus on uh, more on uh, analysis and design and the verification, your language must be simple. If, if your language is complicated, then you, um, you will spend more time on debugging so that your analysis and design is not much uh, uh, shining. So the solution uh, will use uh, MATLAB in the beginning. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the section. Thank you.